Hello friends, this video on transport in plants part 15 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now let us lo look at the most important contributor in upward movement of water that is transpiration pull. Now before we talk about transpiration pull, we should quickly remember what is transpiration. We have spoken about it before also. Transpiration is nothing but loss of water from the leaves is called transpiration. So this loss is due to evaporation of the water droplets from the stomata of the leaves. Now how this transpiration create a pull for water to move upwards? Let us have a look at that. So upward movement of water through xylem is primarily due to transpiration pull. Now logically we can explain this it in very simple terms. Now leaves are present here right so there are stomata in the leaves and in presence of sunlight sunlight provides the energy for the water to evaporate which are present on the leaves so these water will evaporate so there will be scarcity of water here so these leaves will start to pull water from below so some water which was present in the lower leaves will get moved to this leaves Again, they will lack water, so they will pull the water which is present in the stem. Stem will pull the water which is present in the bark. That will pull the water which is present in the roots. And that is how an upward pull will be experienced because of the process of transpiration. And this is known as transpiration pull. And in simple words, this is how the concept is. Now we will try to understand this in detail, step by step. So this introduction to transpiration pull is clear. So water is being pulled up from below. When we say below, we mean the roots and up means the leaves, flowers, fruits, branches. They are all present above the roots. So that upward pull should be present. Cohesion tension model of water transport. This is also known as cohesion tension model of water transport. Now why is it known that way? Because of the cohesive properties of water. We will get to know that very soon. When we talk about how water moves up in the xylem, you will get to know why it is called cohesion tension model. It is also known as transpiration pull model of water transport because here transpiration pull is the most important factor which makes water move in the upward direction. So let us now talk about the process of transpiration. So let us see what is transpiration. It is the loss of water from leaves of plants by evaporation. So evaporation is nothing but when you increase the temperature, the water gets converted into the gaseous form. That is water is lost into the atmosphere in the form of water vapor. That is called transpiration. So now this transpiration occurs through the stomata of leaves. So you know there are minute pores present on the leaves through which gaseous exchange occurs. For example, during the process of photosynthesis, it is through the stomata that intake of carbon dioxide takes place, loss of oxygen takes place. So the loss of water vapor during transpiration also takes place through those minute openings called stomata. So the opening and closing of the stomata is governed by the guard cells as we all know the kidney shaped cells present uh, surrounding the stomata. So let us see what is stomata. They are the pores present on the surface of leaves. So when you see a plant you concentrate on the leaf and when you see it under a microscope you actually end up seeing pores like this. And these pores are known as stomata. The plural is stoma. So they regulate the exchange of gases and water vapor between external air and interior of the leaf. So stomata plays the most crucial role in a plant because leaves play the role, perform the photosynthesis which is mandatory for plant and this photosynthesis happens due to the presence of these stomata on leaves. So now let us see, look, let us have a look at the structure of the stomatal apparatus. How is the structure of stomata? So the stomata is nothing but a small pore or a hole which is surrounded by a pair of kidney shaped cells. So these are the kidney shaped cells which are also known as guard cells because they act like bodyguards to the small pore. So and this pore is nothing but the stomatal pore. 
Now, when you talk about these guard cells, their outer walls are thin, but the inner walls are thick. And because of this property, they help in opening and closing of stomata. Now, what happens is when both these guard cells, they bend, the stomata opens. When the, they both shrink or they both come very close to each other, then this pore also reduces. So something like this, when it opens, it will be something like this. So here you can see the pore is quite big. But when both of them come too close to each other, so you see the pore is quite small. So this is how the opening and closing of the stomata is governed by the guard cells. Now you might ask, when does the, why does the guard cell change their shape? Why do they sometimes contract and sometimes like they go away from each other? So that is controlled by a set of factors. So, we, however, we have discussed about the opening and closing of stomata in our uh, previous lessons. But still, let us have a quick review that how this uh, opening and closing of stomata take place. So, as I said, they control the opening and closing of stomata. Now, what happens exactly is that in presence of sunlight, so this is the stomata. So, you can see these are the guard cells, the kidney-shaped structures. So, in presence of sunlight, the concentration of potassium ions increases in the guard cells. So, in presence of sunlight, see, now the sunlight is increasing. So, the potassium ions, the black dotted structures are the potassium ions. Their concentration increases in the guard cells. Now, when their concentration increases, whenever solute concentration increases, the water potential decreases, right? That is what we understood from the concept of water potential. So, when the K plus when this ions increases, the water potential will decrease. So what will happen? Water from all other cells from the periphery, from all these cells will start to enter into these cells. Now when too much of water start entering into these cells, what will happen? The cells will swell up. The guard cells will swell up. Now since, as I said, the inner wall is quite rigid. So when it swells up, the inner wall will not be uh, I mean, in a mood to change its shape. So what will happen? The outer wall being thin will start bending. Now when it bends, this causes the opening of stomata. So now you look at this picture, you will be able to understand it better. In presence of sunlight, this increases. Uh, uh, iron concentration so water potential increases water enters inside so it starts swelling up so whenever the, you see the concentration increases the cells swell up so when it swells up a bending occurs because inner wall is thick and the outer wall is thin and whenever this bending occurs you see the stomata opens so now you can observe this opening and closing video for quite some time and then you will be able to understand it for yourself. Now the closing of the stomata is exactly the opposite process. The concentration of the potassium ions decreases, therefore water starts flowing out of the guard cells. So the guard cells shrink and as a result the stomata closes. So this is how the stomata opens and closes and this opening and closing is governed by the guard cells. Now there are quite a few factors which influence the opening and closing of stomata. So let us look at the factors which affect the stomatal movement. So what are those factors? Light, of course. So light Light will definitely have an impact because in presence of light, the concentration of potassium ions increases. Now, due to the difference in concentration of the uh, potassium ions, the guard cells swell or they shrink. So, that is how light affects the opening and closing of stomata. Next is temperature. Now, temperature is directly proportional to the size of the stomatal pore. When the temperature increases, the pores, the pores become wider. So, as the temperature increases, pores become wider. That is, the pore opens. Whereas, as the temperature decreases, the pores tend to close. However, in some plants, we see that stomata opens even in darkness. How? Because there is no light. So the, the, the first factor is not at all there. So the potassium ions funda will not work there because there is no sunlight at night. But if you increase the temperature too much, in that case also the stomata can open. So these are the different factors by which stomatal movement can be controlled.
Next is carbon dioxide. Now, carbon concentration of carbon dioxide is inversely proportional to the stomatal movement. That is, as the concentration of carbon dioxide increases, the stomata closes and vice versa. And when the concentration of carbon dioxide decreases, the stomata opens. So that is how it varies with the concentration of carbon dioxide. Now, when we say concentration of carbon dioxide, I mean the internal concentration only impacts, not the external carbon dioxide concentration. It is not about how much carbon dioxide is present in the surroundings. It is only about the carbon dioxide which is present within the leaf or within the stomatal apparatus. Next is oxygen. So oxygen again is essential for stomatal opening. Without it, the stomata cannot open. Water availability. So now sometimes less water might be available to the plant. So if less water is available to the plant, then high transpiration rate, less water available to the plant tend to close the stomata because when you have when you already have less water and if the stomata opens too much and too much of water loss take place then that will cause dehydration in plants right so in order to avoid that whenever there is some uh, water scarcity or whenever the transpiration rate is very high in order to compensate for that the stomata is closed because if the stomata is closed water cannot move out so it will be the plant will be able to preserve some water and the last is potassium as I said as we explained just now the concentration of the potassium ion definitely directly impacts the opening and closing of the stomata. So these are some of the factors which affect the opening and closing of the stomata. So now that we have got a good idea about the structure of stomata and behavior of stomata now understanding the concept of transpiration pull will become more. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.